Fishing rights? What does that even mean? You mean a fish's right to life? Uh... Oh, frickin' Brexit. <laughs> Hello again, Jeremy here from veganinteractions.com, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to react and respond to the latest fishing rights Brexit issue. Before we get into it, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to listen to the pig and subscribe for inspiring animal stories or vegan take on the latest news. That all starts right now. Recently, the post-Brexit fishing rights row escalated. <laughs> row? Is that even a word? So technically you could row to this row? So let's watch the latest news and then break it down together. Two Royal Navy patrol vessels are being sent to Jersey to monitor the situation after a row erupted with France over post-Brexit fishing rights. The French government threatened to cut off power supplies to Jersey in a dispute over a new licensing system for French fishing vessels. Robert Hall is in Jersey for us tonight. And the latest, Robert? Well, the news that those vessels were being deployed came following a phone call to the Jersey government from number 10, from Boris Johnson, who expressed his unwavering support for Jersey's position. To be fair, Jersey's politicians have been trying very hard for the past few days to calm things down ahead of a protest of which more in a moment. So how did we get here? Well, Channel Island fishermen and French fishermen traditionally have worked together pretty well most of the time, but that started to go downhill after Brexit when Jersey started to re-establish its territorial waters. And at the weekend, it also began to issue licenses to French boats. Uh, those licenses uh, cover boats that are regularly here, uh, cover what they can catch, covers the amount of time that they're in Jersey waters. And there was almost immediate pushback from the French communities like Granville and Carteret along the Normandy coast who said, look, this is untenable, we haven't had enough time, there's detail here which is just unacceptable and unworkable. And at a meeting in Cherbourg over, yeah, a couple of days ago, they got together with other fishing ports and said, look, we are going to have to do something here. We are going to stop Jersey boats landing. We are going to go and protest in Jersey. That looks like going ahead. And then we had that uh, speech in the French Parliament yesterday from the Maritime Minister saying, look, we may use Jersey's supply from our grid as a negotiating tool. As I speak, around 70 boats are said to be on their way to Jersey. They're going to anchor outside St Helier. They may well be protesting or blockading. Whether the presence of the Royal Navy will help or hinder, we shall see in the coming days. Robert Hall, thank you. They sent the Navy in? This is the kind of things that start wars. I'm sure the politicians won't let that happen. Oh God, we've got to trust the politicians to work this out. For Boris Johnson, a man who thinks that repeatedly going is a valid answer to a question. All right, before we break this down through the lens of animal rights, if you're watching this and you still eat or use our fellow animals who live in the water, I get it. I used to be a pescatarian for far too long and so I knew better. The key things for me were seeing that a fish is a unique individual who's self-aware. All we have to do is look to the Japanese puffer fish and the elaborate patterns they make on the seafloor to attract mates to see this for ourselves. Also, a fish doesn't exactly jump into a boat. They fight for their lives. That's gotta tell us something. So with that, let's start with my favorite topic, language. Using the flip it to test it approach, I think the whole concept of fishing rights is hilarious. The flip it to test it approach is where we replace our fellow animals with a human and see if the language still makes sense. If it doesn't, it's probably speciesist and could be reinforcing human superiority. So let's imagine for a second that aliens came to Earth and were hunting humans. Similar to fishing, could you imagine them calling it humaning or talking about humaning rights? They're humaning. I also thought it was interesting during the clip that they referred to what they're allowed to catch rather than who cover boats that are regularly here, uh, cover what they can catch. Cover so they've already stripped them of that unique individuality and reduced them to the status of property or objects. After all, they're an animal, not an alarm clock. Now when it comes to fishing, what we're really doing is hunting unique individuals. We could also say that we're killing or murdering them. So rather than fishing, what we're really doing is hunting fishes. Now notice I also said fishes plural, so that their individuality isn't lost by reducing them to one ton of fish. Some of this coverage has also referred to fishing vessels or fishing boats. 
The non-species just alternative to this is floating slaughterhouses. Because let's be honest, that's what they are. The last thing I've noticed through this coverage is people talking about our fish. When the idea of animal rights would say that nobody can be the property of someone else. So they're really just free living beings who live in the water. Also, another bit of coverage that I found super entertaining is the environment secretary talking about the issuing of the fishing licenses. Jersey have already licensed over 40 vessels. They've been very pragmatic uh, throughout this. Uh, they've also been clear that, um, that they'll process the remaining 17 or so that have applied as soon as they uh, put forward the data. So I think it's you know, unacceptable to make those, uh, those sorts of comments. Clearly, they haven't watched Seaspiracy because if they had a genuine interest in the environment, they'd be trying to end the hunting of fishes altogether. After all, we're on the path to having virtually empty oceans by 2048. We're not going to stop this as long as we're bickering over our right to fish. I also think it's interesting to focus on the rights bit of fishing rights. Whose rights are we actually talking about? This news is focused on the human legal right to kill someone. However, what about a fish's basic moral rights? For instance, the right to life. The idea of animal rights says this is not to be violated. So actually genuine fishing rights would be protecting their rights, not ours. I just think this whole coverage is interesting from an animal advocate perspective, which for the fellow animal advocates who are watching this, I'm sure you're all too familiar how we're bombarded by this human-centric take on things and this thought that we hairless apes are the only species on the planet and all of our fellow animals are just objects or property that we own and we can do whatever we want with. And honestly, <laughs> I try to have a hopeful outlook for humanity, but here we are in the midst of a pandemic and we're fighting over the right for who gets to go out and kill others. So I guess I'm having a bit of a pessimistic moment. They come and go as I'm sure they do for a lot of us. But I'm curious about your thoughts. I mean, do you think humanity has the capability to turn things around and think about outside of ourselves and prevent fishless oceans? as well as the capability to respect water animals as the unique individuals who they are? I'd love to know what you think in the comments. So I'm gonna make this a short one. Um, thanks so much for watching. Keep an eye out for the pop-up boxes at the end of the video, and I'll see you over in the next video. And subscribe for more ideas like this for how we can build respect for our fellow animals through our language and more.